2018 has been a pretty good year for film. So in this video, I'm gonna count down my top 10 films of the year. I'm gonna start off with some honorable mentions. These are two films that just missed my top 10 for one reason or another. First up is Cold War, a visually stunning romance film set in a very interesting time in history. I didn't completely understand the dynamic that was presented and the story, but I greatly appreciate this film and I can't overstate it, it's possibly one of the best looking films of the year. The other honorable mention goes to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the most interesting Spider-Man film that's ever been created. It just didn't connect with me as well as it did with other people and as other films on this list, but definitely go watch these two films. Now to move on to my actual top 10 films of the year, I'm gonna skim through the first half of the list because otherwise we'll be here forever. Starting at number 10, we have Mission Impossible Fallout. This is a shining example of what an action film should be. Tom Cruise is a madman, no doubt about it, but at least when it comes to films, he's a madman in a good way. By that, I mean he does all his stunts and yeah, it, it makes for a better film. At number nine, we have Ape Great, Bo Burnham's debut feature film. This film acts as a mirror to the current social climate the children are growing up in these days, you know, with social media as prevalent as it is. It manages to be hilarious yet terrifying at the same time. However, this film may not connect as well with the people who grew up before, you know, everyone had phones. At number eight, we have Searching, a wonderfully executed mystery that's basically set entirely within a screen. It's creative in its execution and it's a pretty smart film. There's some great performances here as well. At number seven, we have Suspiria, a reimagining of the 1977 cult classic film by Dario Argento. It's better in just about every single way. Please don't hurt me. It's potentially a bit too long in places and slow, but I was thinking about this film weeks after seeing it. At number six, we have A Quiet Place. Jim from The Office made a film and it's pretty great. Being serious for a second though, this film is a great example of when jump scares aren't cheap and they make sense. I've seen people have issues with this film, like narratively and plot holes, but fuck it. It's one of the few times I've sat in a cinema and felt everyone on the edge of their seats, scared to breathe because they don't want to be the asshole that makes the sound first. At number five, we've got Avengers Infinity War. Starting off with a big hitter. The MCU has been a part of our lives for the past decade. And to be honest, it hasn't all been great. And there was definitely a point where I started to feel that superhero saturation, but they've continued to improve. And to me, Infinity War is the pinnacle of that. All the world building has finally paid off and now all the pieces fall together and this is what we get. The chemistry between the cast is evident and the performances are great. This includes Thanos, who takes his place as the best villain in the MCU, not Killmonger, okay? It's a visually stunning film and I'm so glad that they've embraced colour rather than the dull palette they used for the earlier films. It finds the right balance between comedy and drama, it's narratively interesting and I generally think the ending is the perfect cliffhanger. Now I feel for a lot of us, our feelings on this film could change depending on what happens in Endgame. But for now, I think this is generally the best film in the MCU. At number four, we have You Were Never Really Here. Now for something entirely different. This is Lynn Ramsey's newest film. You may know her from her previous works, including We Need to Talk About Kevin. This film actually shares some things in common with that. The film follows a traumatized veteran called Joe, played by Joaquin Phoenix, who tracks down missing girls for a living. When a job goes wrong, he ends up discovering a conspiracy. Now, that's all I'm gonna say for this very moment. What I'm about to say may spoil some stuff, and I highly suggest that you go into this film not knowing anything, because I'd be very interested to know how other people feel about this film, especially if you're not highly analytical. The film is very much about violence, but we actually see very little. In fact, the most explicit violence we see is self-inflicted. For me personally, I feel this film is meant to be a commentary on how desensitized we've become to violence and tries to shake that from us by not showing us anything so that when we do actually see violence, it hits us a lot more. This is also reflected in the characters because unlike a lot of films, these characters don't shake off the violence that they witness or participate in. In fact, you can kind of feel like the mental scars building. Also, Joe is an anti-hero, but he's not cool, dark and edgy. And his crazy isn't cute, it's generally unsettling. And by the end of this film, you just feel sorry for him because his life has been 
nothing but violence. The performances are great, especially from Joaquin. This film is also visually gorgeous and the score is amazing. So please do check this film out. At number three, we have three billboards outside of Evan, Missouri. Martin McDonough really knows how to make a dark comedy drama. And my main praise for this film has to go to the wonderful cast, especially Francis McDormand as Mildred and Sam Rockwell as Dixon. On that note, the performances are helped greatly by some splendid writing, morally greater than Max, and Dixon's character arc is amazing. We're not expected to forgive him, but we can understand that he's changed and appreciate that. Visually, this film is gorgeous as well. I especially love the wide shots of the billboards. This is a wonderfully layered film. At number two, we have Lady Bird. This film actually inspired me to make my most recent short film, and it broke down my criticism bias. It was being heavily praised by just about every voice in film that I trust, but the trailer didn't really do much for me, so I kind of went in expecting to have issues with the film to avoid getting disappointed. For the first half an hour, I was ready to complain about the pacing, but then something happened. My complaint disappeared and I kind of just fell into the film and rediscovered my love for the medium again. By the end of the viewing, my complaint felt pointless. It feels so real, there's nothing overly flashy here, it's very grounded filmmaking. Great performances, great story, great film. The only reason it's not higher is I can't properly explain my love for it. At number one, we have First Man. Damon Chazelle is quickly becoming one of my favourite directors. Whiplash was great, La La Land was my film of 2017, and now this year we get a film about space from him. More specifically, a biopic about Neil Armstrong and all the work and the mission that went into him being the first man to walk on the moon. In fact, this film isn't really about space. It doesn't glamorise the journey. If anything, this film completely put me off wanting to be an astronaut. Not that I ever wanted to be, but you get my point. Some of the test flight stuff is genuinely terrifying and plays out like a fucking horror film. And for a story where we kind of already know what happens, it is insanely tense in places. That should speak volumes about the quality of this film. This film does actually focus more on Armstrong's story and aspects of his personal life. And I've seen people complain about Ryan Gosling's portrayal of him, but that's the way Ryan tends to play his roles and he's a very good actor and it makes sense for this film. He's very distant, he doesn't ever want to get close to his family because he's terrified of what might happen to him. He doesn't want his family to have to, you know, mourn for him. While we're kind of on the topic of emotion, this film probably got top billing on my list because it almost made me cry twice. The first time was the Apollo 11 successful launch. Don't know why, but that really made me emotional. But then when Neil's walking on the moon and we get what he does, I almost shed a tear. It's just, this is a perfect film. I got to see this film in IMAX and it really made it an experience. The moonwalk stuff is filmed on IMAX cameras and is absolutely gorgeous. Though to be fair, the entire film is gorgeous in its own way. If I remember reading rightly, it's filmed on both 16mm and 35mm and both of them work really well and like work with the story. I, I can't properly explain how much I love this film. It is not for everyone, but it's for me and fucking hell, I, I love it. So please, if you get a chance, go watch it. So yes, that is my top 10 films of the year. What do you think? Have you seen any of these? It'd be nice to have a little discussion about it. I recently became a member of the website Letterbox, which is a social media website designed around film watching, which is perfect for me. And if you didn't know, for the last like year and a half, I've been tweeting my initial reviews of films. All of those tweets have been kind of formatted together and put into reviews on that website. So if you're at all interested, go check them out. They're not always the most well formatted or well thought out, but they're what they are. Oh, and while I'm here, I just want to do one last thing. The worst film of the year. I tried to be positive, but I had to include one bad thing. And the worst film of the year goes to The Cloverfield Paradox. 
It is the most generic and trophy sci-fi film I have watched in a long ass time. There are horrendous performances and dialogue and from someone who has really enjoyed the Cloverfield franchise so far, I have not been so disappointed with a film in a very long time. So if you haven't watched it, please don't. It is generally bad. But anyway, yeah, that is 2018 wrapped up in film. Hopefully 2019 is going to be just as good. I guess we will see. Okay, all right. The film follows a traumatized veteran called Joe, who's played by Joaquin, Fe Joaquin, Joaquin, how do you say his name? Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin, Joaquin, Joaquin? Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin, okay. Fuck my life. I should know how to pronounce his name. 